So this week, a friend of mine asked me to be a guest on her podcast, and we just finished recording. So I still have the setup, and I thought that this would be a good opportunity to show you how I set up the visuals and the audio for recording the podcast. Now, I was not the host, so we didn't even end up needing the visual side of things, but this whole setup can apply not only to podcasting, but also to webcams. So you can use this setup for recording your Zoom conferences or FaceTimes or anything that requires a webcam. So in this video, I'm going to show you setups with three different cameras and three different microphones. And these are all way better options than what you'll get using the standard webcam and microphone that's built into your computer. So the first setup is the one that I use for recording the podcast. Now the podcast was audio only, but I also used a very similar setup to record our YouTube live stream. And I'll leave a link down below if you want to check out the resulting quality of both the podcast and the live stream. But the first one I think is one of my favorites just because it gives you the very best visual quality at the very least. And so this one involves the Camlink dongle, I think is what this is called, and this is available for purchase online. I actually purchased this about a year ago and it took about eight months to arrive because when I purchased this, everyone was getting into live streaming and everybody wanted this to replace their standard webcam on their computer. So this cam link by Elgato is really small, but it allows you to use almost any modern day camera and use that camera quality as your webcam. So the cam link has a standard HDMI port on one end. So you plug in an HDMI cable on one side and then on the other side, you connect it to your camera. Most cameras have micro HDMI ports. You then take the USB-A part of the cam link and you plug this into your computer. You can then open up any video conferencing service of your choice. For me, that's usually Zoom or FaceTime and go into preferences and just make sure that the video input and the audio input are the cam link. And then you're good to go. Like this is almost a plug and play device. There's no extra software that you need and no extra cables other than that HDMI cable. You can use this to immediately replace your webcam with your camera of choice. So for me, that's usually been the Fujifilm X-T3 because it has excellent color and autofocus out of the box. But the other camera that I might potentially use this with is my Sony a7R 3 For camera settings, I'm using pretty standard cinematic settings. My resolution is at 1080p and my frame rate is at 24 frames per second. So my shutter speed is double that of my frame rate, which is 1 50th of a second. And the aperture I believe is at f4. ISO is the lowest it can possibly be while maintaining the lighting in the room. So for lighting, I do have a light behind me which illuminates the background and that's just a standard floor lamp. But then in front, I'm using my Falcon Eyes standard light that I shoot all of my YouTube videos with. I've done some other videos talking about this light, but I really love it because it's ultra portable and compact, but yet it's a really big light. So I don't have harsh shadows behind me and it just gives me really nice lighting for shooting my YouTube videos as well as any live streams or podcasts that I'm shooting. For sound, we had quite a few options to choose from, but I stuck with the Rode NTG microphone, which is the one that I shoot in studio for all of the YouTube videos. This is a really great microphone because you can really dial down the gain, which is really important in this room because we have a lot of echo. And I also have some construction going on with the neighbors nearby. So I can dial the gain down really low so that it only picks up the sound that's directly in front of it and doesn't pick up a lot of ambient noise around me. This is the Rode NTG microphone and we have this one set to a gain of six as well. For kicks we went up to the maximum. This is now at up to 15. I think Rode officially recommends starting off at around 10 or 11 and adjusting from there. Now we're minimizing the gain to one so the swing hopefully is not as loud. The other great thing about the Rode NTG is that you can plug it into a camera via a 3.5 millimeter mic jack and use it as a standard on camera or boom camera microphone, but you can also use the USB-C port and you can plug this directly into a computer. 
So it's really great for doing voiceovers or maybe Zoom calls or podcasts where you don't need the camera portion and you just want really good audio. You can replace the audio using that Rode NTG microphone. So the Rode NTG is resting on a boom arm. I'll leave a link below to the exact boom arm that I'm using. I would say that it's decent. It could be better quality, but it gets the job done. But usually I have this boom arm directly overhead when I'm shooting YouTube videos. But since my angle of view is a little bit different for the podcast, I chose to have it down below just because it could place the mic closer to my mouth, which would give me better audio quality. I also have an ultra long 3.5 millimeter mic jack extender so that I can connect the microphone directly into my camera. This is really handy, especially in a studio environment because you never quite know how far away the microphone is gonna be from the camera. The Rode NTG does come with a thin foam windscreen and you can also buy an optional furry windscreen. And those are really great if you're filming outdoors or somewhere where there's a lot of noise or wind, such as a fan blowing nearby. But in this room, I don't have a fan and I don't have any external noise to really worry about. So I've removed both the foam windscreen and the fuzzy wind muff because now I can get the very best audio quality. Now, if you don't have a Rode NTG microphone, you can use any other little shotgun or cardioid microphones that you have available. One option is this Rode Video Micro. So again, I would take the fuzzy thing off if you're filming indoors and just use this portion of the mic. You can use the same boom arm setup and just position this microphone as close to your mouth as you can possibly get it without being in the camera frame. It's becoming more acceptable to have your microphone in the camera frame, but I still prefer to not have it in the frame if I can help it. And this is what it would sound like to shoot with the Rode Video Micro as opposed to the Rode NTG microphone. And if I were to lower that to be directly out of frame, this is what it sounds like with the Rode Video Micro shortly out of frame. Another really great microphone option that I love is the Rode Rode Wireless Go 2. So this is a wireless microphone that just came out and it comes with two transmitters and these transmitters have built-in microphones. So you can clip one to your subject and even have a guest and then you both can move freely around while having a microphone directly underneath you. This is especially helpful if you're filming with two people or two guests and we actually use this setup to film our YouTube live stream. So you can check that link out below if you want to see and hear how it came out because we were using both the cam link and the Fuji foam for the visuals and the audio was the Rode Wireless Go 2. But here's a demonstration right here in this setting. So here's the Wireless Go 2 transmitter and this cable is connected directly into the camera but I have one of the transmitters right here below me and this is what it would sound like in relation to the Rode NTG microphone. And so this microphone, you know, I have it a little bit close to my mouth right now but I can clip it to me. So if I clip this microphone to my shirt, it is standing out, like it's definitely in the frame, but I can get further away from the microphone. I can even get out of the picture and my voice should still be really, really level. Shouldn't matter where I am. But in case I don't wanna use this built-in microphone because of how it looks, or maybe I wanna change the quality, I can choose my own wired lavalier microphone, such as this DD VLOV. So this DD VLOV is the next audio option. And this can plug directly into the camera, or it can plug into something like this Rode Wireless Go 2. And one of the things I love about the DD VLOV is that it is super long. Actually, this is a love-hate relationship. Because this cable is long, I can be connected to my camera and you know get really far away from it. However, because it's so long, you really have to be good at cable management so as not to get this too tangled or accidentally damage the cable. So for the very first test, I have the VLOV right here. I can clip this to my shirt, but I have the other end plugged into the Rode Wireless Go 2 transmitter. And so I could use this, clip this to my belt, and clip the microphone part to my shirt, thread the cord down my shirt, and so it just looks a lot better. So this way you still are seeing the microphone, but it just doesn't stand out as much as the actual Rode Wireless Go 2 transmitter and I can still be pretty mobile. I can move around and not have to worry about where the actual microphone is in proximity to me because the microphone is clipped directly to my shirt. 
But if you don't have the Rode Wireless Go 2 or a wireless microphone system, you can still take a wired lavalier microphone like that DD Vlove and you can plug it directly into your camera. And this way you can still get much better audio than what would come out of your computer's webcam normally. Okay, so I talked about the audio options and one camera option, so let's talk about those other two camera options. The very first one is the GoPro. This right here is the GoPro Hero 9 and it's in the media mod, but you actually don't need the media mod. I'll talk more about that in a sec. But the GoPro Hero 8 and the Hero 9 can actually be used as a webcam. You'll have to have a USB-A to USB-C cable and you'll also have to download the GoPro webcam app on your computer. So after you install the app, there's an icon in your upper right hand corner. And here you can control your settings and also preview the image that comes out of the GoPro and change the digital lenses and the resolution. Within the GoPro, there's one setting you have to change. You have to swipe down, go over to connections, USB, and make sure that webcam is selected. So this looks really great as a webcam solution, but unfortunately it doesn't sound great. As in, there's no sound at all when you have the GoPro connected. Even when you're using the media mod, which gives you not only microphones, but also a 3.5 millimeter mic jack to connect external microphones. So if you're just recording video on the GoPro, that works fine with the media mod, but as a webcam, it does not work. So you can't replace the audio. In fact, you can't get any audio from GoPro. If you want audio as a webcam, you have to get it from your computer computer, meaning you have to connect a separate external microphone to the computer. All right, this is another GoPro Hero 9 webcam test. In the last test, I thought I was recording audio with the media mod. Turns out that is not possible. So instead, I've had to connect my external microphone, which should be sounding a lot better. The next webcam option is a GoPro competitor, and that is the Insta360 ONE R. So this is a little action camera, and it's really cool if you haven't heard of it because unlike the GoPro, you can actually swap out the lens. So this is the standard 4K lens mod. It's the most similar to the GoPro, but there's also a 360 lens mod and a one inch sensor. So you can swap those out and essentially get three different cameras in one with the Insta360 ONE R. And a recent firmware update to this camera also allows it to be a webcam. And it's one of my favorite features on the Insta360 ONE R. And one of the reasons why it's my favorite camera to use as a webcam. So to use this as a webcam, first of all, you wanna connect it to your computer via the USB cable. Then you wanna make sure that webcam mode is enabled in the camera. Next, open up your video conferencing platform of choice, such as Zoom, and just select Insta360 ONE R as the camera. Once it's connected, this camera not only gives you visuals, but it gives you audio, which is something that GoPro doesn't do. The audio actually does record from the camera this time, unlike the GoPro, but you can also add an external microphone if you would like to do that instead through your computer. So yeah, I like this camera a lot, but the biggest feature I love about it is that when you're using this 4K mod in particular, the camera, I don't know what it is, but it actually follows you. It actually knows where you are and it's kind of a slow follow, but it will actually follow you across the screen if you move and it kind of zooms in. So I think that's really cool because it looks like you have a little camera operator following you as your webcam. You can also swap out this 4K lens mod and use the 360 lens mod and still use it as a webcam. It is a little strange and you have to be in the right setting to make that 360 webcam work, but if you're somewhere where you want to show off your entire space, I generally am not, then it's really cool to have that 360 lens as an option because it can show a bigger group of people or show off your entire space as the webcam. So as a bonus, there is one more camera that you can use as a webcam, and that is the DJI Osmo Action. The only problem is you have to purchase the webcam software as a separate download, and it's made by a third party. It's actually not officially supported by DJI, but a lot of reviews say that this works. The program costs $15 to download and I didn't do it or test it because honestly I'm really happy with my current webcam options. But if you have the DJI Osmo Action, you can indeed use this as a webcam. So now that I talked about the sound options and camera options, I want to talk a little bit more about the exact setup. 
Now, if you think about where your standard webcam is on your computer, it's actually placed in a really good spot where you can look up at the camera and it looks like you're giving eye contact to your host or whoever you're talking to on your video conference. In this case, I have my laptop and I try to position the camera to approximately where the normal webcam on the camera would be so that I can still see the screen so I can see whoever I'm talking to. One other thing to note with the camera is that it tends to power off if you have that sleep mode enabled. So most cameras, you know, it automatically after a minute or two, it turns the screen off. And so you wanna go into your camera settings and make sure that that's disabled. Otherwise, your camera might power off in the middle of your video conference and you don't want that to happen. But when you do that to your camera, that does mean that the battery might get eaten up really quickly. So I would also use a battery grip, which allows you to extend the life of your camera. So I'm using the Fujifilm X-T3 battery grip, which means I'm using three batteries total. And based on our last experiment for our live stream, that lasted over two and a half hours. Two and a half hours went by, we burned through two batteries and still had one full battery left. So that's a really good way to make sure that your camera and thus your video stream can stay powered if you're gonna be going for a long time. One more thing I try to do with the space is to try to soundproof it as best as I can. The biggest is the sound blanket, which I just got in like a week ago. And I hung that directly behind the camera so that ideally it's preventing any echo from bouncing across the room. I also have some cheap sound panels that I've placed directly to my right here and also attached to the ceiling. So that helps absorb some of the echo so that we have some really good sound. And on that note, that's everything I have to say about webcams for now. Gave you three camera options as well as as three audio options for improving your webcam quality and replacing the webcam that's on your computer. So I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video.